Welcome back to my YouTube channel. These are some of the questions that my students saw in their exams today. So I decided to bring it up here so that we can look at it and understand the concept in case you repeat questions. Because there are some questions that they repeated today, which is day two, right? They repeated it again today, right? In fact, that same question was repeated in day one, day two, and this is day three. They still repeated the same question. Maybe students are not getting it right. So in this video, I'm going to show you the questions that came out in this day three that might not be your question but in case you see something similar to it so i can be able to solve it notwithstanding you have to start reading your books so that anyhow the question comes you'll be able to score 90 and above in physics with no further ado let's get right into the video question one if the radius of the earth is 6.4 times 10 to the power of six meters the escape velocity of a satellite from the earth is what I we are giving g to be 10 meters per second square. Now we have the following options. Option A to be 8.00 times 10 to the power of 3 meters per second. Option B 9.00 times 10 to the power of 3 meters per second. Option C 1.13 times 10 to the power of 4 meters per second. Option D 1.25 times 10 to the power of 4 meters per second. Now, before we could solve this, you should ask yourself, what is escape velocity? Which formula are we going to use for escape velocity? So, let's solve it. So, I have that the radius of the earth is giving us 6.4 times 10 to the power of what? 6 meters, right? Then, we are giving g to be 10 meters per second squared, okay? So, what's the formula? The formula for escape velocity is equal to root of 2g okay now this is radius of the earth right now let us substitute into what we have to get our answer by saying that this is root of this is 2 times my g is what 10 times my radius is what 6.4 times 10 to the power of 6 right okay now let's work it out to see what we have we are going to have root of 1, 2, 8, times 10 to the power of what? 6, okay? Of which, if we find the root of it, it's going to give us, and we have 11313.7 meters per second, right? But, but because the answer is left in standard form, so let's raise this to power. We're going to say this is from here, we count 1, 2, 3, 4, right? These are decimal places, so this becomes... VE becomes what? 1.13 times 10 to the power of what? 4 meters per what? Second. Do we understand? So this is how to get our escape velocity. And from what we've got so far, the correct option is option what? C. Question 2. Calculate the wavelength of an electron of mass 9.1 times 10 to the power of minus 31 kilograms. Moving with a velocity of 2 times 10 to the power of 6 meters per second. And we're giving plan constant as 6.63 times 10 to the power of minus 34 joules second. Now, look at it. We are looking for the wavelength of an electron. And the equation we are going to use is what? The Broglie equation. This states that the wavelength of a particle is equal to the plan constant over what? Momentum, right? But momentum is mass multiplied by velocity. We can now say that this is h over what? Over mass multiplied by what? Velocity. Is that clear? So let us take the parameters we have. We are asked to calculate the wavelength. So that is lambda is equal to what we are looking for. Okay. Then the mass is given as 9.1 times 10 to the power of minus 31 kilograms. Okay. And the velocity okay, of the electron is given as. 2 times 10 to the power of 6 meters per second. And we're giving plan constant to be 6.63, sorry, times 10 to the power of what? Minus 34 joules second, right? Now, what you're going to do is to just substitute our values into what we have. So let's go by saying that what? Lambda, which is what I'm looking for, is equals to my plan constant is 6.63 times 10 to the power of what? Minus 34, then divided by, my mass is given as what? 9.1 times 10 to the power of what? Minus 31, right? Multiply by velocity, which is what? 
say times 2 times 10 raised power what? 6. Are we there? Now, if we go back to say that this lambda is equals to, let's work out and see what we have. This is 6.63 times 10 raised to the power of what? Minus 34, then divided by 1.82 times 10 raised to the power of what? Minus 24, right? Now, by the time you divide, you're going to have 3.64 times 10 to the power of what? Minus 10 meters, right? That becomes our wavelength, right? Now, this is how to solve this kind of problem. I hope that is clear. All right. If the cubic expansivity of brass between 27 degrees Celsius and 100 degrees Celsius is 5.7 times 10 to the power of minus 5 per Kelvin, what is its linear expansivity? Now we have the following options. So what you are going to do is to see the relationship connecting the cubic expansivity with the linear expansivity, okay? That relationship is what? Gamma is equals to 3 what? Alpha, right? Now since we are looking for what? The linear expansivity, we're going to divide both sides by 3. This cancel this, right? Therefore, I will say that Alpha is equals to gamma over what? 3. Is that clear? Now, what is my gamma given as what? This. So we'll say 5.7 times 10 to the power of what? Minus 5, right? Now divided by 3. Simply we'll divide it and see what we'll have. If you do that, our answer is going to give us 1.9 times 10 to the power of what? Minus 5 per what? Kelvin, right? Now this is how to solve this problem. So you can see in this particular question, we are not using the temperature to do anything, okay? So the correct option you want to have gotten so far is option B. Question 4. Which of the following forces is responsible for surface tension? Option A. Adhesion. Option B. Viscosity. Option C. Angle of contact. Option D. Cohesion. The correct option to this question is what? Option D, which is what? Cohesion. Because cohesion is a force between the molecules of the same kind. Okay? Now, and in surface tension, we have the molecules of water reacting with each other. So that means the correct answer is what? Cohesion. A lamp rated 100 watts, 240 volt, is lit for 5 hours. Calculate the cost of lightening the lamp. If one kilowatt hour of electricity energy costs five naira, and we have the following options: option A, two naira fifty kobo; option B, three naira twenty kobo; option C, six naira fifty kobo; option D, nine naira sixty kobo. Simply, what you are going to do for us to solve this problem is to get our power, and from the question, we already have power to be what hundred watt watt. So we have our P to be hundred watt watt. Even though we have PD, let's just put it. PD is equal to 240 volts. Okay? Then we have the time. My time is 5 hours, right? Then we have the cost. The cost means 1 kilowatt hour. So, 1 kilowatt hour costs us what? 5 naira. So, simply what you are going to do... We don't need this PD here. We don't even need it in this question at all because we already have the power. So what you're going to do is to convert this power from watt to kilowatt, okay? So that it can be in the same measurement of the unit given in this particular question. And for us to convert from watt to kilowatt, we're going to divide simply by what? 1,000. So we say this is what? P is equals to, okay, this is 100 over 1,000, okay? Now I have this. This is going to give me 0.1 kilowatts. Is that clear? Now the next thing is to multiply by time, which will be in R, okay? So that answer will be in kilowatts hour. So multiply by what? 5. It's going to give me 0 0.5 kilowatts hour, right? But from the question, 1 kilowatt hour costs what? 5 naira. So for us to know the cost, I will say the cost simply is by multiplying if 1 kilowatt hour is cost 5 naira, sorry. Now 0 0.5 kilowatts hour is going to give us what? X. Simply do cross multiply, okay? But if this is an example, what I'm going to do is just once I've gotten this 0 0.5,
kilowatt hour just multiply by the what the cost that is just the fastest way to do it so you're going to say that what cost is equals to 0 0.5 times what 5 naira okay so the answer is going to give us what 2 naira that is 2.5 which is what 2 naira 50 kobo is that clear so but if you're writing an exam once you get to this point just multiply by the cost and that becomes your answer okay so the correct option to this question is option a the temperature gradient in a metal rod is 5 degrees celsius per meter if the temperature at one end of the rod is 100 degrees celsius and the length of the rod is 2 meters calculate the temperature at the other end now this particular question i have to repeat it again because i said it in my day two i'm repeating it again is because this particular question has been repeated twice for day two and day three it has been repeated so i'm bringing it up again with another version of question in case they twist it you understand so i can know what to answer well the formula is temperature gradient equals to what change in temperature over length okay if you don't know how to solve it you can check on the video i made on day two all right now let's look at this question now the question says the temperature gradient is what five degrees celsius per meters so that means that what my temperature gradient is equals to five degrees celsius per what per meters okay we are given a temperature at one end i'm looking for the temperature of the other end now this temperature gradient is equals to temperature gradient is equals to change in temperature over what l right now what you're looking for you're looking for the change in temperature here so it can help us to get the temperature at the other end okay now we have the length and the length is giving us what it's giving us two meters right what you're going to do is to say delta theta is equals to temperature gradient multiplied by what length right which is my temperature gradient is giving us what five multiplied by what two this gives me 10 degree celsius is that clear if the temperature at one end is 100 degrees celsius we assume that the gradient is from higher to a lower temperature so that means now if this temperature change in theta is equal to what theta 2 minus what theta 1 right assuming that the gradient is from higher to a lower temperature okay so that means that our higher temperature we're going to subtract the lower one from it okay to get the temperature from the other side now that is my t1 now becomes what 100 minus the theta that we have which is what 10 degrees celsius so the answer becomes what 90 degree celsius simply put that if you have gotten this change in temperature and your end of the temperature what you're going to do is to subtract them to get the other end of the temperature i hope that is clear all right question seven the velocity time graph represents the motion of a car calculate the total distance traveled by the car now we have this diagram okay they asked to calculate the total distance traveled now how do you calculate the total distance traveled this is the velocity time graphs i'm going to label it this is what a b c d and what e okay i'm going to use the area of a trapezium to solve it and you can actually solve it in this way in two ways but the faster one because of time should be the area of a trapezium which is x is equals to half a b plus o c multiplied by a e right now this is x is equals to half okay what is my a b look at it a b so come down here you have 15 minus what five to give me 10 plus my o c look at o look at c so 22 minus 0 is what 22 i have 22 okay then my a e look at it that is the height okay 15 minus 0 is what 15 i'll have 15 do we understand now this is equals to 1 over 2 when i add this i'm going to get 32 right this is 32 okay then we have what 15 so let's work it out 2 into this one 2 into this you have what 16 so my x is equals to 16 multiplied by what 
15 and it's going to give me 240 meters i hope that is clear now this is how to solve problem like this in case you see it in your exam tomorrow if this video was able to help someone out there please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications to get notified each time i post videos and lastly do not forget to share so that other students that are preparing for this same first coming exam can see it and learn from there i will see you next time in the next one bye for now